What's up guys, it's Chellers and I'm back after my long one year hiatus of not playing NHL 20. I am back to doing YouTube. The reason I didn't do NHL 20 was because I really wasn't liking franchise mode. The whole coaching system was not for me uh, at the start. And then around midway through the year, I started to give franchise mode a chance. And uh, after a while, I decided to get used to it. And I actually had the hang of using coaches, stuff like that. At first, I found it really weird. But now I actually enjoy using coaches, and that's why I'm doing NHL 21 franchise mode. I have not given up on this YouTube channel. I will keep it going, hopefully, for the rest of NHL 21, depending on how you guys like it. Now, uh, before we get started, I'm going to say that, uh, yeah, NHL 20, I really wasn't interested in the whole game as, a, as in general. I mean, I was kind of found that I was dying, that it was dying. Uh, be a pro, didn't get any improvements, franchising with the whole coaching thing I wasn't a fan of at the start. And World of Chell, it kind of seemed boring at first. It was the same as last, as the NHL 19. Uh, so this year I'm going to give it a try. I mean, I'm even going to be doing a be a pro uh, career mode because they did a lot of new things for it. But for now, we'll start off with franchise mode. So yeah, the team I'll be going with since, if you watched NHL 19 for all the way back from there with my uh, subscribers, I did do Boston as my most recent team, and since they're an Eastern team, I like to do an Eastern-Western switch every time I do a new franchise mode. So I'm going to be taking a Western team. So before we get into which team I will be doing, I have uh, realized that looking at my past two franchise modes, I did end up choosing Vancouver, who was a team that was leaving their rebuild and ready to get uh, some success. The future was about to become now. They had players like Pedersen, Besser, Horvat, and Hughes already in the team, as well as Demko. Can't forget about Demko. And for Boston, I ended up doing. Uh, I made them be that team that and win the cup right away, going maybe through a little bit of a retool, and then make them start winning the cup soon after. So now, for now, I want them. I want a team that's gonna be in that sort of. And I'm sorry for the, for the, the fan base that if you're watching this video, but. I'm going for a team that's more in the mediocre sense and that's more um, they're good enough to not be a top 10 pick in the draft but they're not good enough to be able to consider themselves as a real contender so a team that that's like that in the west there's two that really came to mind the first one I was thinking of doing was the Minnesota Wild so to you Minnesota Wild fans yeah I'm not going to be doing you this year uh, maybe next year but the one that I really want to do, because they have some players, but they don't really have the full team, and there's an interesting situation that happened in the offseason with them, is the Arizona Coyotes. Now, a lot of you may know the whole scandal that happened with them, testing their players, the combine or something like that, um, last year, which resolved to them losing their first round pick. And another thing that had happened with them this year is um, Ekman Larson wanted to get traded to two teams, Boston and Vancouver. So I'm going to try doing what the GM couldn't of uh, Arizona. And I'm going to be moving Ekman Larson. So to you fans that uh, love Ekman Larson, he will be leaving the club. I mean, I'll try. And it will be to either Boston or Vancouver. I will be keeping his wish. So yeah, we'll get that started right now. So we'll go to the rules and settings right now. And for now, I like to start with no injuries. I like my franchise mode with no injuries. But if you guys want me to put injuries, uh, I don't. I don't mind doing it. It's more because it's really a hassle because I can't really find the right settings to do it. Waivers will keep waivers on. Uh, fog of War, I really hate Fog of War, so I'll leave that uh, off. Trade difficulty will stay on medium. Scouting will be auto. Uh, that's it for that. In terms of sim engine scoring, I will be leaving on medium. The same with the shot generator, which is a new thing they added. So basically, uh, 25 franchise mode life will be playing only 10 years though. Uh, we won't be playing any games, it'll be a full simulation franchise mode like I've usually done. We'll be keeping salary cap on, and we'll be taking control of the Arizona Coyotes. So, if you guys have watched my videos in the past, you know that the first episode of every GM mode that I do, or franchise mode that I do, is going to be a roster um, recap, sort of. I'll be looking at who the player, what the team has to offer uh, in terms of players, prospects, draft picks, and I'll be just analyzing what their future is, what their short-term and long-term future is, and my goals for the team are. So starting off, let's go, here we go. The loading is going to end. There you go. So as you can see, Oliver Ekman Larson is our highest rated player, and I will be trying to move him out because those were his wishes. Now we will go quickly to the view contracts, and we'll look at the main roster of the 
Arizona Coyotes. So, looking at their forwards, they have some pretty good players. They have Phil Kessel, who's an 85 rated, but he's 32 years old. So, he is, he's definitely like, he's a first liner. He likes, uh, he has really good stats. But I will look into maybe moving him out, if not this year, maybe next year. He has two years left on his contract. I definitely want to get a bit of value for him because I don't really see us being a winning team right now. But we'll keep looking. Clayton Keller is our basically our offensive jewel, medium league potential. He's a 84 overall second line forward is what he's listed as. And he can play center and left wing. So that's really good. 73 face off, so he's more suited for a left winger. So yeah, that's that's good for now. Christian Dvorak, medium top six forward at 83-24. Same with Nick Schmaltz, 83 overall, 24 years old. Um, Schmaltz is a pretty big contract, but I think if I could find the right coach and the right system for him, he might be able to improve a lot and be worth that contract. Stepan has one year left at 83 overall, 30 years old. He wants an extension. I'll look at that after. Connor Garland, a nice nutty little guy, 82 overall, 24 years old. Uh, he's a RFA next year, so that's interesting. Kraus, 79 at 23 years old. Looks like he's not going to grow into anything great. Barrett Hayton, 20 years old, 79. That's not bad. Pitlick. So we have any other good guys over here? Nothing really interesting in terms of the forwards. Now defense, here is Oliver Reckman Larson. Now here is a guy, 8.2 million. We do want to move him out. Uh, well, the team wanted to move him out. I don't really want to, but I will be respecting his wishes in real life by moving him to either Boston or uh, Vancouver. So 87 overall, I mean, he's a great player. Good in every aspect of the of his stats. But he has a long contract. How many years is that? Let me go back. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven years? That Was that right? Did I miscount? Seven years and he's 29 years old. That's a pretty big contract at 8.25 million as well. Uh, so yeah, that's me one. Jalmerson is another one I might look into moving out. He's uh, 33, 85 overall. He probably has some good value on him. But here is our other goose. Our other golden goose of uh, defense now, Jacob Chikrin, 80, what was he? 83 overall, 22 years old, medium elite potential, another one like Clayton Keller. So those are our building blocks right there, Keller and Chikrin. So that's an important thing to look at, Goligoski, uh, again, he has one year left on his contract. A lot of guys have one year left in their contract, that's really good. Uh, Demers, and that's pretty much it. So they have, judging by what they have on forwards and defense... They're a team that's, again, they look like they're good enough to maybe make the playoffs, but looking like a first-round exit, or a team that's just um, not making the playoffs, but probably going to be like, just missed it. So we got to really give them an identity right here, and I'm looking more towards a sort of rebuild, all right? Try and finish maybe as a top 10 pick, I think would be the best course of action, because I don't really see us winning a cup unless I get like two blockbuster trades on offense, but again, if I'm trading away... Ekman Larson, that's going to secure the deal, and yeah, we're going to be a sort of rebuilder. I'm not really saying rebuilder, because rebuild is kind of blowing up the whole team. I don't really want to do that. I'm just looking at potential trade options. And one more position I want to look at is our goalies. We're in a great spot for goalies, because Antti Ranta... Oh, he doesn't want an extension, actually. So Darcy Kemper and Antti Ranta are two goalies, and they're both at 85 overall, and uh, Kemper's at 30, Ranta's at 31. I will definitely be trading Antti Ranta. Because we have two starter goalies, and they're both really good. They're both the same overall, and one of them is being paid $4.2 million with, with one year left. Definitely going to get him out of the team, get some value off of him. He doesn't even want extension, so we definitely want to try and trade him as fast as possible. But we'll stop looking at our main rush for now. Let's look at the system. So, in the system, we have Christian Fisher. All right, I don't know why he's in the system. Uh, oh, he's an RFA, so we have to sign him as soon as possible before December 1st. Uh, again, not a bad player, but the same situation, you know, he's he's a medium top six, but he's probably not going to grow that much. He's already 23 years old. He might grow to like an 82 overall if we're lucky. And besides that, uh, we don't really have a great forward that has a lot of potential. We have some medium top nines, but nothing special. Looking at the defense now, um, same thing. We have Copa Bianco, Capo, sorry, Capo Bianco. Medium top four, but he's 74 overall, 23 years old. So he's probably not going to make the NHL. And that's about it. Yep. And goalies, uh, Aiden Hill, an 81 overall. See, like, perfect right here. Aiden Hill is an 81 overall backup goalie. He's in the minors. He will definitely be trading away anti-Ranta for 
uh, anyone, and Aiden Hill will be our backup for the um, for this season. Maybe he might become a starter. He has medium starter potential. If he has a good season, he might grow. But yeah, we've looked at our contracts now. We've seen that a lot of players have one year left, so we're listed as a seller. Now, the next thing I'll be doing quickly will be looking at the um, scouts. So I want to get good scouts in every region and I want to get some pro scouts as well. So we'll quickly look uh, by region. And look, so I want to have one scout in each region. So NHL Pacific is an A+, plus, right? Is that what it says on the RE? Yeah, okay. So this is a lot easier than last year. I don't have to go into the actual guy. Well, not last year, NHL 19. So Central, Metro, and Atlantic. I will fire the Atlantic scout and get an A or higher. AHL, I don't want to look at. So we'll get rid of that right away. Actually, I probably should keep the AHL, but whatever. So there you go. We have our NHL scouts and you get an AHL, and sorry, an NHL Atlantic coach. Um, sorry, not coach, scout. Now for the CHL, we have A plus, A and A. I probably want to get another set of um, Canadian Hockey League coaches, uh, I'm icing coaches, scouts. Uh, USA West, USA Central is A and A plus. I want to get an USA East. Oh, Liga is a B firing you instantly. Uh, NLA is an A minus, so I will be firing you. And that's basically it. So we got to get uh, W, Q and O, H, L, scouts and another and a usa east scout as well as a liga and an extra liga and a rest of the world scout i believe right so that should be enough we'll do that quickly right now so we'll do the higher scouts we'll look at the whl all right so let's do like this i'll go by age go at the youngest so Kreider. Where is CHL? He's A in the WHL, so we'll sign him right there. A nice five-year contract. Then we'll go to the OHL. Again, by age, we have LaBelle. Jerome LaBelle, he is an A in the OHL, so we'll get him. And we want young players. We don't want anyone to retire. We want young scouts. QMJHL, Broder. Camille Broder is an A-plus in the QMJHL. Perfect. So there you go. We got our we got our scouts for the for a Canadian Hockey League. Now we'll go to the NHL, and we need an NH. We need a sorry not NHL. We need a USA. We need a USA. Oh wait, I'm on the NHL. Whoops, my bad. USA. We need a USA East. So Stevens, Isaiah Stevens, he's a B minus in the East. Clemenson, A plus in the East. Perfect. So we got our USA and we got our Q. Uh, o and WHL, so now we'll go to NHL. We need NHL Atlantic, of course, I forgot about that. So Nermi, Anika Nermi is an NHL Atlantic A. Perfect, that's what we need. So there you go, we got, uh, we got you. Europe, we wanted an extra Liga, right? What else was there in Europe? Yeah, extra Liga. So you're an A, so we'll get you. Cameron Lees. A Nordic. And we need a Liga. Whereas Nordic, Liga is A minus, no thank you. We need A or higher, A plus, perfect. So Marie Taticek, is that her name? So we got a female scout in the team, beautiful. And we need a rest of the world. So we got a Russia, rest of the world A plus. So Dadanov, Mikhail Dadanov, welcome to the organization. We gave them their contracts. Now in terms of coaches, we have Dupont. He's an A minus coach. Uh, but for now, we'll leave him, I think. I'm not really looking into one. I want to try and get the right coaches for um, Clayton Keller. So we'll quickly go to outlines and we'll look at what Clayton Keller likes. So he, uh, head coach can help. Uh, no, I want to keep the head coach off. So Clayton Keller, oh wow, he hates the first line. Yeah, he really hates the first line. So if we want Clayton Keller to work and we want to keep him in the organization. We got to trade away. It's not trade away. Sorry. We, gotta, we can't trade him. I'm not trading him at all. We got to fire the coach and find a coach that likes his preferences of carry, shoot, balanced, and don't block as his um, preferred strategies. So that's in part one. Oh, Nick Schmaltz loves the second line. He's maxed out on the second line. So this is the kind of thing that I really wasn't liking at the beginning of last year was the whole, if they don't like the lines, they don't perform well. And if you don't have a really good coach, so like, let's say 
let's say you have a good coach, but the, your players don't like the first line, they're not going to perform well. But then if you have a coach that matches the first line perfectly, but he's not a high-rated coach and the team won't perform well. So it's really hard to find the right coach for the team, which I guess is kind of like in real life. Like looking at Stefan, Stefan does like the first line. Keller hates the first line and Kessel hates the first line as well. And he's said what? Carry, shoot, balance, balance. Keller is carry, shoot, balance, don't block. So they're kind of similar besides the, um, the last set was balanced for a block, don't block. Uh, Keller was don't block and Kessel was balanced. So if we could find a similar coach, a coach that has their play styles, we can get a pretty good boost to those guys. So Kessel could stay in the team for this year to get a bit of success for Keller, make him be better. But uh, yeah, looking at that, uh, Ekman Larson will be leaving the team for sure. Uh, and yeah, Chikrin. Oh, here we go, Chikrin. Does Chikrin like the first pairing? He likes... Uh, what the hell? Balanced? What? Why is it showing offensive stats? Um, okay, so interesting. I don't really know what uh, what Chikrin likes, but I could sort of play a matching game by looking at what the coach likes and his hold pinch and what the, he and what he doesn't like. So by looking at this, I could um, I could assume that he's either a hold pinch or he, and he's either a cycle shoot. He's not a balance balance because balance balance is a is the yellow icon. Which is this, right? So like Jason Damaris is most likely a balanced balanced guy. Whereas Chikrin is probably an opposite. Uh the same one of the yeah, I really don't know, but he's either hold line or pinch or recycle or shoot for his bias and preference. So I could look at that easily and I could find the right uh, right guy that likes defense for that. Uh goalies again, yeah, scratched. Yeah. So looking at the team, I mean again, look. If you if you were to take out like this the fourth line and move the every line down, so Keller Kessel and step out on the second line and so on, and you would have an actual first line, this would be a really good team. But the thing is we don't have a first line. Like looking at this team right now, unless Keller develops into like an 88, 89 overall, we do not have a first line. And the same with defense. I mean Ekman Larson is leaving, so we have Jalmerson and Chikrin manning our top pairing, which is not great, unless I could get the coach to really enjoy, uh, them to really enjoy the coach's style. But uh, yeah, for now, we'll leave that aside. Is there anything else I want to look at? Uh, again, coaching, we'll look at, we'll do coaching next episode, but I'll look at the coach right now and decide what, um, what the preferences were for uh, DuPont on his defensive and his uh, also his first line strategy. So they Kessel and and, uh, and Keller both did not like his strategy, which is behind the net. Now, I believe it's either balanced behind the net or oh wait, this is interesting. Hold line pinch and is balanced for defensive pair. Oh no, that was green, right? Yeah, so. That means that uh, Jalmerson, not Jalmerson, Chikrin is a balanced for hold line pinch and he's a shoot for his second one because he was red. So he's definitely not balanced on his second one. So we need a balanced shoot as a defensive pair one for our, for our coach. And we'll go quickly look at, we'll go back to the first line, sorry, to the, to the edit lines and we'll look to see if uh, Keller likes the style, the strategy of overload or crash the net. Because I believe those are the, the only strategies there. Were just three strategies or just four? I think there's three. So Keller, yeah, Keller likes overload. Okay, and Kessel also likes overload. Okay, so we're gonna need a guy that has overload offensive strategy with carry, shoot, balance, balance, or carry, shoot, balance, don't block. If we get a coach like that, that's a that's a basically like an, a B coach. We can get some success at that first line, and that's our goal for right now. So that's done. We looked at our contracts. Uh, also, one thing uh, that I really don't like about starting a GM mode right away is why there's a lot of free agents. Now, I'm not going to be touching RFAs. That's 100% because it's kind of not fair. I really don't want an offer sheet because, you know, in real life, nothing's been really been made yet and an offer sheet hasn't been made. And UFAs, Hoffman still hasn't been signed and Dustin Bufflin is still in the team. Interesting. He's still in the league. Uh, but I think he in real life retired, so I'm not going to be going for him as well. But yeah, all these free agents, like uh, these really good ones, like Hoffman, uh, Granlin, Chara, Vatnin, Galchenyuk, a lot of these guys I probably won't be going for. Maybe a depth one, like um, 
Like Thornton hasn't even been signed by Toronto. See, and Thornton has been signed by him, by them. But these guys may be like the 81s, the 80s. I may say, okay, I'll sign them if I need depth. But for now, I won't be signing them. Or listed as a seller. Again, I already went over that. And I think that's it. We'll look at the draft class as well. See who's available for drafting. So let's look. And the first overall pick to start the season is considered Atu Rati. We don't know anything about him. We'll, we'll do the scouting after. I'll be scouted for him. But he looks at the first overall pick of this year. Uh, I don't really know if he's the actual first round pick in, the, in real life. Because uh, all these guys don't really have faces besides oh, Trevor Wong and Ratty have faces. So are they the first second pick projected? I have no idea. I really wasn't paying attention to the 2021 draft class in real life. But uh, yeah, so Ratty is an interesting pick. I don't know what he is, but he could be a good choice. If we end up tanking, we got lucky, we got a Ratty, that could be really good for us. But for now, I think we've covered everything, right? We looked at our team. We looked at our players, looked at our contracts, looked at our lines, our coaches. We got some scouts. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, okay. So I'll end the episode here. Again, this is an episode where we don't do anything. We don't make any moves. We just uh, went, uh, did an overlook over the team, looked at what we wanted to be. And oh yeah, sorry, I have to discuss what our future is. So... Looking again, looking at our team, we'll be trading away Ekman Larson, which is a huge thing. So for this season, I am not aiming to make the playoffs. That is 100% certain. I do not think that we are a team that's capable of making the playoffs. And if we do make the playoffs by fluke, we will not go far. At least that's we're not, we're not expected to go far. Of course, anything could happen. A simulation engine is interesting. I have not used it this year. Well, I have not uh, done it this year. So I don't really know how it works. But on paper, we are a team that's looking like, again... Probably going to be between um, 7 to 15 as our draft pick. So, maybe with Ekman Larson, if we trade him out, maybe we might go lower. Hopefully, at a top 5 picks that I'm aiming for this year. But, again, we never know. We're going to wait and see until the season starts, which will be next episode. So, I think I'll end the episode here. I think we really discovered everything. I even talked about the future now. So, yeah, we'll end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to subscribe and like for some more content. I will be trying to upload some more. And I'm happy to start doing YouTube again. So I'll see you guys soon.